Amen. God is so good. God is so wonderful. Amen. When you find him, you find love. Amen. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We truly thank God. Amen. We thank God. Amen. For what's going on. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. My wife comes. Amen. Dr. Veronica Simpson. Amen. We're going to open up with a word of prayer. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We praise your holy name, amen, for this day. Father, it's because of your son, Jesus Christ, that we are sitting here right now. It's no other reason, but it's all about Jesus Christ. And Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day. Amen. When we found you, Lord, we found love. Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus for your son. We thank you right now, Father, that you have blessed us another day to be with you. We thank you, Father, that you're going into the homes, that you're going into the hospitals, that you're going behind the, the jails, behind the prison walls, that you're going into the White House, that you're going over to different countries. Lord, we thank you right now because it's you that let the sun rise up one more day. Father, and we thank you. We don't take it for granted. Father, we thank you that in some parts of the country, there's storms raging, there's snowstorms, there are rainstorms, there are tornadoes. But we thank you that we got sunshine on this side of the country. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we praise in your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. We are excited that you would choose to join us on this Sunday morning on Morning Manna. Um, we are, as my husband have said, that we come to you today in a special way. We are embarking upon 35 years of marriage. And so we're very excited to come to you and share what I have entitled our love story. We want to, we want to share with you uh, how the Lord brought us together and how we have managed to move forward in our marriage on this morning. So yes. we want to open up. Uh, I find the scripture so befitting in Genesis uh, chapter 2, verses 24. Uh, it says, Therefore a man shall leave uh, his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Mm. And on this morning, you know, I was thinking about the years that we have came together. We have known each other probably 34 years, but our marriage uh, license actually say we got married in 1988 so that puts us at 35 years so I'm very excited I'm going to uh, open up this morning just by you know we're going to be real we're going to be honest amen but we want to share with you the Simpsons uh, love story uh, that we are pretty private people but we feel as though that the Lord has led us to close out this month with our love story uh uh, giving you enough information to let you know when you embark upon the right person. Uh, so I'm going to turn it over to my husband, Walter Clay Simpson, this morning as he opened up uh, just on how everything began to be come together in the beginning. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 35 years. Amen. God is a good God. Amen. Because I'm sitting here right now. After 35 years, amen. And, and let me just tell you, it ain't nobody but God. Amen. We've been through the ups. We've been through the downs. We've been through the separations. We've been through the uh, 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 adultery. We don't uh, did things. I don't did things outside of the marriage. I'm telling you, it ain't been it was so easy, but I'm telling you, when you turn it over to God, amen, God is the only reason that we are sitting here after 35 years, amen, a lot of uh, uh, my friends, amen, that was married with me when we first married uh, 35 years ago, amen, a lot of them have been divorced and remarried, amen, but I truly thank God that I finally turned my life over to him, that I finally turned my marriage over to him, amen, and, and, and things just got better. It has got better and better. Every day is a testimony, amen. And in, in the word of God, God says in his word, 
Amen. From the beginning, marriage was a part of God's design for us. One man and one woman. Genesis 2 and 22 through 25. The Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man. And he brought her to the man. The man said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. For she was taken out of man. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife. And they will become one flesh. The man and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. Amen. And you have to turn to the word of God. Let me tell you, you have to turn to the word of God in your marriage because the devil, the enemy, Satan himself do not like marriages to stand. When he can get into the marriage and turn up the home, amen, he is rejoicing. He is rejoicing when you are uh, apart. He is rejoicing when you fighting. He is rejoicing when you are uh, waking up and you in the, in the living room and she in the bedroom. Amen. The enemy has, is rejoicing. And I have went through all of this. I have went through it, me and my wife, and we are standing because we turned it over to God. And I had to be the man of the house and turn it over to God. I had to quit thinking that I could do what I wanted to do. God designed the marriage between the man and the woman. It was God, a man that, that, that did it. And it was God that oversees it. And I truly thank God for him overseeing my marriage right now. And turning my marriage around to make me a better husband. Amen. It's a, it's, a, it's a testimony. It's a work every day. Every day I got to try to love my wife as Christ loved the church and gave his life for it. It ain't no, no, no easy way around it. It's some work to be done every day. I have been working for 35 years to be with my wife right now. And it's a blessing from God. Amen. I just wanted to kind of speak from the perspective of a woman. You know, when I, um, before I met my husband, mm -hmm. oh, it's been a while, but when I met my husband, um, he was in the military, uh, active duty in the United States Army, and I was living in Knoxville, Tennessee, just to give you a little bit of background, and I was not saved at the time, and neither was he saved at the time. But I was going through an era in my life where I had two children, a son and a daughter, uh, outside of the marriage. And I felt a void. Honestly, I felt a void. I was searching. I was looking. And I was looking for love in all the wrong places. Listen, ladies, I was looking for love in all the wrong places. Mm -hmm. Tried to find it in the club. I was never a big drinker. But when I did drink, I got out of hand. And that was only a beer or two. But I was looking for love in all the wrong places because being into broken relationships, you tend to get um, some time abused. You tend to get verbally abused, mentally abused, and sometimes physically abused. But nevertheless, I was crying out to the Lord. I knew enough to do that uh, because I was dragged to church uh, in my younger days. And so I, at this particular time, was lonely. And I wanted a man in my life that could help me raise my children and lo and behold, I came across Mr. Walter Clay Simpson. They call him Clayboy. And he was at home um, visiting from the uh, United States Army on leave. And of course, we were on Martin Luther King Boulevard. I'll never forget it. And we were in what you call a hole in the wall. I'll never forget that. One way in and one way out. And so, you know, of course, he, you know, hit on me. You know how that go, ladies. And I thought I was, you know, too much and all of that and a bag of chips. But in my heart, I was desiring something more. Mm -hmm. And uh, I came across my husband at the time who was in a other, another relationship uh, that he was coming out of. And, uh, you know, God worked that out. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to tell you that what drew me to my husband was he did not look at my faults. Mm, I want you to hear that. He did not look at my faults. He didn't know much about me, but he didn't look at my faults. And he saw that I had two beautiful children at the time. I had India and I had Eric, uh, who is my older son and my older daughter, my only daughter. And, of course, uh, I was embarking. I was on a search. I was on a conquest. And I met Clayboy, 
uh, who was well known in Knoxville, Tennessee, and we stumbled across each other, and the rest is history. Um, I relocated to Colleen, Texas, and after living with him, I said, no more shacking. I want you to hear that. I would not settle for less. I had enough worth in me and I had been taught enough mm. to know that I needed something more, that I was valuable, that I had a, a price uh, that was far above rubies. I had a price yes, with yes. that no, no price mm -hmm. tag could be put on my life. And so therefore I ventured off. I left Knoxville because I wanted to get out of Tennessee. Uh -huh. And I left Knoxville and I joined him uh, in Colleen, Texas with my two children. And long story short, I ended up getting saved. I ended up getting saved uh, through Church of God in Christ. And uh, the Lord really healed my heart and worked on me and, you know, was working on clay. He still wasn't saved at that time, but I was a praying woman. Mm. I was a praying woman and I ensembled myself around older women that could pray me through and help me navigate through understanding what it is to not have a saved husband, but yet remain a saved wife. And so, you know, thank and praise God for the old mothers. I'm praying to God that God continue to resurrect those type of mothers in the household of faith. Mm. And so, you know, I met my husband. We loved on each other. And I can admit, the first, honey, you remember that? The first four years, it was hard. The mm. first four or five yeah. years, it was very hard. Yes. But I, I loved him because he loved my children. And I wanted to say, you know, when you find a man who treats his mom well, who yeah. respects his mother, who loves his mother, you can almost rest assured you got a good thing. He who finds a wife, he found me, but he who finds a wife finds a good thing. I'm going to turn you let you kind of pick up on that. And, uh, yes, and I want to pick up on it. She she didn't say nothing about when we got married. Oh, oh she skipped that after six months when she <laughs> came to Texas. She could just jumped on in the four years. <laughs> But we got married, uh, 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 she gave me a thing. She said, oh, I'm going back to Tennessee if you don't marry me. I said, well, I ain't married nobody for five years. I just got divorced. Mm. And well, she said, no, I'm going back. I'm going back. And then I changed my mind. And I said, well, come on, we're going to get married. Well, we went on and we got married at the courthouse. Amen. And we got <laughs> married. And it, co it didn't cost back then all this money you paying for marriage now. You know, it cost us $25. And now it probably cost you $25,000. Mm -hmm. But we got married, it was $25. Amen. And I was just a young <laughs> sergeant in the Army. But I truly thank God you can look back and laugh at all of that. And we didn't have no big luxurious dinner after we got married. Oh, no. Matter of fact, we went to Burger King where kids were king. Amen. I truly <laughs> thank God for Burger King. Amen. After the marriage. Amen. And we just... We, we, we just rejoice and we laugh about it now. And, that, and as we went on in the things that we did, we was living in a one-bedroom apartment. Talk about that. One-bedroom apartment. And when I left that home in the morning, that apartment in the morning, my wife, she folded, she put things up. You would never know that it was four people living in a one-bedroom apartment. Amen. And I was a young sergeant. I didn't have no whole lot of money. I had come out of a divorce. And I truly thank God, amen, that he redeemed, amen, everything that took place in my life that wasn't of God. He, he started working on me. God was still working on me. God was just working on me. And so being in the army, you get deployed and you get sent off to different countries. Yes. You go to different uh, 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 training exercise. It was always a preparation in the United States Army for us to get ready for combat if it ever came about. So all this time, my wife, amen, that I can say that she was truly a woman after God's heart. Amen. And, and, and like she said, amen, being in church of God in Christ, amen, oh, she, yes. she, she prayed for me. It was times I come home and, 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 and when I go to sleep, amen, I wake up, it was all in my shoes, my, my pocket sometimes to have a little oil in it and come to find out she was anointing my feet and she was anointing my my my, my pockets and anointing me amen as I slept to what she wanted amen God to intervene in my life 
Amen. I was drinking. I was partying. I was just, just doing everything. I wasn't being the husband that I should have been to my wife. And I wasn't being the father example that I should have been to my kids at that time. But I truly thank God. Amen. That I can sit here today as we fast forward after we traveled all around the country yes. and went through everything that we went through. And I'm sitting here today saying that God is real. God will intervene every time. Amen. God has not lost a battle. So don't you sit out there and, and thank that God has given up on you. God has given up on your husband. God has given up mm. on your wife. God has not given up on your marriage. It, man, you have to turn it over. Quit being, don't be so prideful. Turn it over to God and admit your faults. Admit that you don't went through the things that you went through. Admit that you, you the drinking. Admit about the adultery, the fornication, the lying, the backbiting. You got to admit them things and confess them things to Jesus Christ and turn them over to him and walk away. Amen. That's why I'm sitting here today. Able to call on Jesus Christ's name because he made, man, made it with where I'm here 35 years. 35 years, and it is beautiful. And it gets better and better every day. It's like I met her the first time on Martin Luther King 35 years ago. When she was that young, amen, a spunky young girl. It's just like it right now. That's how God will make it to where she's just like 35 years ago. She gets sweeter and sweeter. And sometimes you get a little piece of sour candy too. But <laughs> amen. I want to say that amen. In the midst of the sour candy, she's still just as sweet. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, I want to kick in and I want to intervene <laughs> because when we got married, uh, I, I, I don't want to share code it, but I do want to keep it 100 is that the enemy came in like a flood mm. in our marriage, uh, in our prime time, um, right around eight or nine years. The enemy really came into our marriage, and I give that 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 play until communication. You know, one thing my husband has always said that Veronica, when 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 wartime come come open or when there's a war started, the first thing that the enemy do is he break down the communication. That has never left me because that is so true. It's not a money. I come to find out, babe, it's not a money problem. Mm. It's not a drinking problem. It's not a problem where there may be extra marriage or affairs outside of the marriage. Yes, that do play a part. But the bottom line is communication. Excommunication. Because when the enemy break down communication, then you go to other different outlets trying yes. to get answers. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what we did. Mm -hmm. You know, and one thing I want to say is my family uh, is wonderful. Clay's family has been wonderful down through the years. But one thing we come to realize is that what goes on in our home, we have to keep it in our home. Yes. And so we begin to take that uh, up at through wisdom. We learn it through trial and error. And our marriage hit a, a really hard bump. You know, too, like he said earlier, at a time in our life, we were like three days from divorcing. Mm. Like literally, yeah, uh, we had absolutely. separated. I mean, I was seeing that I had filed for a divorce. I was working with a, a pastor who has now gone on home to be with the Lord, uh, resting in the bosom of Abraham. But all along when she was taking my money, she was praying for me. And not only that, I was a young girl in ministry and she took me under her wing. I had went through a lot of things. I was lost. I had backslidden. Listen to this. I had backslidden and still was, was ministering as if everything was okay. Hear me. Mm. Because nobody heard my cry. Nobody could see that open wound. But she raided our end. She, she, she piggied on into that. She saw that beyond uh, what the normal eye could see and took me under her wing and nurtured me back. Um, because I really was angry with the Lord. I really was. I felt like I had been dealt a raw hand. And so we went through that period of separating. Clay was in Chattanooga, Tennessee on TDY. And I had went back to Tennessee. I had went back to Alcor, where I originally was raised at. Yeah. And uh, even in all of that, God was yet working. He was yet working. I mean, I had got bitter. Ladies, let me tell you. 
I had got bitter. I was so balled up in my hurt. I was so balled mm. up in my own in my own selfishness that I could see no wrong in Clay. I mean, that I could see no wrong in me. And one day I started praying. I mean, I was praying to the Lord. You know, I was still doing the church thing, you know. But I was also doing my thing on the outside, you know, as an evangelist doing stuff that was not right. But when the Holy Ghost fit, when God filled me with the Holy Ghost, he equipped me and he reminded me that you are mine and I'm making you and I'm molding you. And you need to get your eyes off of clay and you need to see what you're doing. You know, I would say like, Lord, he doing this, he doing that. And the Lord would come back and say, but aren't you doing it? If you're not doing it physically, you're thinking it. And I remember one day Clay called me at my grandmother's house and we were separated. We were three days from getting a divorce. And that weekend was a Friday. Mm -hmm. This is going to bless you. This is going to help somebody today. Because I believe God is saving somebody's marriage yeah. right now. Yes. I believe God is, is, is preparing a woman for a husband. But even in that, babe, do you remember you called me and I was real bitter. Mm -hmm. And I was real hard. I tried to play real hard. Yes, man. Now that was on a Friday, and I couldn't get into the attorney's office at the time before the, the office closed to sign divorce papers. Mm -hmm. But between Friday and sometime during the hours of Saturday, I felt God like I'd never felt His presence before. I mean, it was as if God had came down and shaken me, and it was a shaking that I could not shake. Now, I'll be honest, I haven't felt that a lot of times in my life, but that's one time I felt it. Mm -hmm. And it was like, you need to get to your husband. You need to, this is what I want you to do. I don't want you to tell anybody you're going to Chattanooga, Tennessee. I want you to put the kids in the back seat, and I want you to go on down. And at that time, if my daughter's watching, God used her. God used India at a young age to say to me, Mama, you need to go back to Daddy. You need to go back to daddy. I miss daddy. You need to be with daddy. God used a child. God will use your children to get you back in position. And I'm forever grateful to that. Anyway, I took her up on it. You know, I kind of bowed down. Shut up, girl. Go on in the room. You don't need to be talking to me. I'm the mom. I'm grown. All of that. But at the end of the day, the Holy Ghost came in. And I felt myself going down the road in a hoopty to meet my husband in Chattanooga. And when I met him, mm. when I met him, he was just so kind and so wonderful. And in my mind, I'm thinking that this rascal do one thing. If he do one thing, I'm out of here. If he, if one, I get, if Ooh, I hear one phone way. call from another a woman and yeah. whatever, you know all them crazy thoughts, you know, because uh, I was going through, I was going through mentally, mm -hmm. most of all. But when I went to my husband in the apartment he was staying in. I'll never forget it. Remember this, babe? You did get a phone call. And you said, don't call me no more. I am with my family and I am uh, uh, no longer wanting to be engaged or whatever you said in the conversation. I just remember hearing that no more, don't call me no more. And I remember you had liquor. And I remember you going to the sink and I remember you pouring out that liquor bottle. Mm. And I remember I was still hardcore. I was like, I still ain't sleeping with this rascal. I ain't feel fooling with him. I want to be divorced. It was in my mind. Mm. It was in my mind. But the whole time, the Holy Ghost was shaking me. You better hear what I'm saying. Yes, yeah, When God ordained something, he ordained it. Because yeah. he knew we were going to be in ministry on, up the year, on, 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 later on in life. Yeah. And I thought I was doing ministry without him. But God... That wasn't, that wasn't it, people. That wasn't it, woman. That wasn't it, man. That wasn't it, young lady. That wasn't it, young man. Whoever's watching me. Whoever's watching us. Our love story. I'm going to tell you something. We both, that evening, I'll never forget it. We fell on our knees. Yes. In the bedroom. And we repented. Mm. And from that moment, we said we were never going to bring up what took place in the past. And don't you know, fast forwarding forward, we have been running. I think that's been since 1995. Mm -hmm. We have been running. We have been walking this journey. We have not, there's no perfect person. There's no perfect marriage. But when I say, you know, my husband got saved. And when my husband got saved, the church loved on him. His spiritual father at that time loved on him. 
You know, I could I stopped throwing stones. And the biggest thing of all, I became submissive, even though I was in a place of authority in ministry. I became submissive. My husband was still the, the, the uh, head of his home, but I was learning how to submit. I was trying to navigate. I was trying to battle. I mean, I was trying to walk through this storm, through this battle, you know, and that's why I know our marriage is a great testimony today because mm -hmm. people don't want to say and admit. That they hit the humps and the bumps along the mm -hmm. way. You know, that they did this outside of the marriage. Yes. And that they did yes. this out of the marriage. They uh -huh. want to act like it's always been perfect. They want to act like, you know, they haven't had no, 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 you know, no problems outside of it. And then I got, I was pregnant with Hashan. We had another mm -hmm. child. My baby boy, Hashan, walked to Clay Simpson in Germany. I had shifted and went to Germany. And God just began to work on us even the more. Even the more. And I want to tell you something, and I'm going to let my husband pick it up. In those moments between Colleen, Texas, Fort Benning, Georgia, going to Germany, back to Fort Benning, going back to Colleen, all of that, we lost everything. Mm, 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 mm. We hit rock bottom. I think, and I'm not ashamed to say it, I think we lived in the pawn shops. Mm. And I forget my mother-in-law got us a car before she passed away because we had a hoopty. We lost that when she passed away because the insurance wasn't, hadn't been kicked in long enough. <laughs> we hit rock bottom. And that's when God met us. I'm going to let you pick up. Yes, amen. Woo, this is getting fired up. Oh, this, this is, this is, this is a, 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 a story. Amen. That can be put in the books. Oh my God. Amen. My, my. And, when, and, and then at the same time, you got to be a soldier. And you can't let them know what you're going through. Ooh. Amen. You still got to uh, 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 instruct soldiers. You still had to perform. Amen. And then and I can remember, amen, the balloon busted. Amen. And we had to get ready to go to combat. After all these years, we've been together. Mm. And we had to get ready to go fight a war over in the Middle East. And I truly thank God that it wasn't nobody but God that prepared us. It wasn't nobody but God that kept us. Amen. Sometimes you will go to the lowest of the low. But that's when God will meet you at the lowest of the low. Oh. And he will come in. And when he raised up a standard, there's no devil in hell that can get in the way. Amen. And if you're under the sound of my voice right now, mm. you do not have to be a girlfriend. Come on here. You don't have to be a sleeping partner. If you ain't married, you ain't got no business taking what you taking from a man. You ain't got no business taking what you taking from a woman. You got to stand with Jesus Christ and he will bring you out of what you are in. There's no man that can replace God, oh that can love you like God loves you. There's no man that can build a home like God can build a home. There's no man can do it. And if you are calling yourself. Come on here. Dealing with someone and they ain't wanting to turn their life around and you wanting to turn your life around and you not married, run for your life. Jesus. Run for your life because I can guarantee you it will not get no better. You got to run for your life. And if that man or if that woman ain't wanting to be married, ain't no need of you wasting your time. Just grab hold of Jesus Christ. He will lead you out. And I'm going to read this right here. Marriage is, is permanent. Covenant for life. Living together without the marriage covenant is in more. Malachi 2 and 14. You ask why it is because the Lord is acting as the witness between you and the wife of your youth. Become you have, have broken faith with her through she is your partner, the wife of your marriage covenant. Amen. It's in more if you ain't married to be with another partner, a man with a woman and living together 
and you're not married, God can fix it. I'm telling you, I'm sitting here after 35 years and the hell that we went through all of these years. Let me just tell you, it ain't been a perfect marriage. Show me a perfect marriage. And I can tell you that somewhere along the line, they ain't telling the truth. Amen. It has been a battle. Amen. Every day is going to be a battle. But when you got Jesus Christ in the corner with you, you can't lose with the stuff that God used. The word of God is your answer. You got to go to the word of God. That's why you can look at this testimony right here. Mm -hmm. Our marriage is a testimony. Oh, yes. Amen. And, 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 it, and I have no, no out against no one oh, that's that true. I dealt with in the past. Because let me tell you why I ain't got no out with no one I dealt with. It was my fault. Come on. Whoa. It was me that went outside the marriage. It was me that's trying to be the big man. It was me. And it wasn't no one that I was with. It was my fault. I could have said no. But I was letting the enemy utilize me. Mm. The enemy utilizing me to mess up somebody else's life. I wasn't just messing up my life. I was messing up somebody else's life. You have to turn yourself over to Jesus Christ in order to fix yourself. It might be 50 years. It might be 60 years. I will be 62 years old in March the 24th. I'll be 62 years old. And God is still working on me. God is working on me. He's working on my wife. He's working on our marriage because I decided to make Jesus my choice. And I'm begging you. I'm pleading with you. Make Jesus Christ your choice. And you can sit beside your wife. You can sit beside your husband. Amen. When you got God in your marriage. And if you ain't got God in your marriage, in your life, you're going to continue to go through hell in a bad way. So get Jesus. He's the only way. You know, and also I wanted to say this. Sometime, ladies... We go find a man. We go find a little boy. Or you become a cougar, if mm. that's what you want to say. Mm. But can't nobody feel that boy. He that finds a wife mm. finds a good thing and obtaineth favor in the Lord's eye. Mm. Mm. So I, I'm telling you right now, you may be a young lady. Listen, you may have had a bad marriage and came out of divorce. I would be the first to tell you with my clinical background as a counselor, you don't need to be getting involved with another man. You need to be healed. You need to be counseled. Because you're just like uh, the lost seeds. You need to, you need to recover from mm. that brokenness. Mm. Mm. You don't need, because see, the enemy knows you're very vulnerable. Uh -huh. And the enemy comes in very, he's crafty. Yes. He's Ooh. a slickster. Yes. Uh, some call him slick willy. Mm. I call him Abaddon. I call him Apollyon. Mm. I call him Beelzebub because that's who he is. He's a father of lies. Tell you all this good stuff. And then when you, once you get in or once he get his claws into you, you can't get out. But I want to tell you, you can't get out. But with God, all things are possible. And I want to tell you that maybe you may be sleeping in a man's bed right now. You may be laying next to a man that does not belong to you. He may be married to another female. Yes. I want to tell you this too. He ain't going to leave his wife for you. You're just a ch side chick. Mm. And mm. I want to tell you something else. Huh? Uh, you need, God is speaking to you this morning through our love story. Yes. God is speaking to you. You say, Lord, I need an answer. I've been praying for an answer. And let me tell you something, ladies. If you are an individual that's damaged goods, you need to get that counseling. If you are a male that's been damaged goods, you need to get that counseling so that the next relationship that you enter into, it will be pleasing unto the Lord. Now, let me say this. God does restore marriage because I've seen divorced couples remarry. Yes. Oh, yeah. I've seen them remarry and run on in the Lord, but they will tell you it was nobody but God. That's right. And I also want to say this morning, I want to oh, speak yeah. life to that dead marriage. Mm -hmm. I want to speak life 
to that family that the enemy is trying to break up. Because when you when you mess up in your marriage, the children fall under prey. Mm -hmm. The children fall under prey. They sponges. They soak up. They soak up. And let me just tell you this, lady, because we can be crafty. If you are even in a divorce right now, you're trying to see a man on the side. That don't get it neither. Mm -mm. That doesn't get it neither. You need to bow down, humble yourself, come all the way in to the Lord. Make yourself a relate. Have you get your relationship with the Lord. Let him tell you your worthiness. Let him tell you your valueness. And even if you are single and you say, Lord, when my time go come? When my I see all these people shacking up and look like they being blessed. The devil is a liar. Don't you fall into that trap. Mm -hmm. Maybe the Lord is prolonging your husband so you can get yourself together. Because I can tell you right now, my husband always say, you know what, Veronica, what was draw, what draw me to you? You kept those children clean. You were a good mother. You took care of those children. You took care of the house. Ain't no man want no nasty woman. Mm. Now, you want to keep it 100? Ain't no man want no woman that's going to be with every man in the city. When a man looks for a wife, what does he look for? A good thing. What does he look for? A good thing. A clean thing. Mm -mm. Not a perfect thing. But clean. But clean. Yeah. So I come to mm. give you that instructions on this morning to let you know if you need counseling, I'll cancel you personally. But you got to have a little fee come with it. Mm -hmm. But I will give you that time to let you know. And then let me say this, babe, too. Because sometimes you said this too. Sometimes you can marry the wrong person. You can. You can. I'm going to let you chime in on that a few minutes. You can, you can, you can. Mm, the Holy Ghost just put you that can, in my spirit. You can, you can because you are not ready for marriage. And when she says sometimes you can, you can marry and you're not ready for marriage. Really, you're not ready for marriage. I went through this the first time I was married. But I've been married 35 years. It's this married, but I was married for eight years before I got married to my wife now. But I was a young infantry soldier, partying, cuss coming in the army, doing the things I was doing, running around and, and, and got married and didn't want to be married, had uh, kids with the first wife, and, and but I wasn't a man of God. See, like I said before, I can't blame it on the woman. A man has to step up and be a man of God, be the man in the house. And so this is what's taking place now. This is why the homes are so broken right now, because don't nobody want to live under the orders of God. Mm. See, if you want to be a good soldier, you got to obey the orders of God. If you don't obey the orders of God, you're going to have a miserable, broken home forever. That's why kids are, kids are being raised and taught how to commit adultery. Mm. Woo, Lord Jesus. We're teaching our kids how to commit adultery when we bring a man around our kids and we're not married to him. And we shack it up. The kids are seeing everything and watching your actions. So when they say, well, mama, you doing it. Oh, yeah. Why I can't do it? You can't, you can't give that answer. Is I'm the adult. You do what I say and not what I do. No, no, no. Them days is over with. These kids are very intelligent. Mm. These kids got computers. These kids got iPhones and all this. When I just got, just now, about a, a, a three or four months ago, got rid of a flip phone. So I'm trying to tell you. The kids are more advanced. And we are in the homes where the kids are raising themselves. Where the mother ain't being the mother and the father ain't being the father. The man is the head of the house. But Jesus Christ is the head of the man. And we got to take our rightful place and quit thinking that we can do all these things and it's okay. It's not okay. We are turning our homes up. We are raising kids, amen, in a sinful way. And so that's the life they want to live when they become adults. Some of them. So we as mothers and fathers, we as the man, the man, 
the man. We need to quit lying to ourselves and accept Jesus Christ as our father and begin to take back the home where we supposed to be in, in the home, amen, letting the kids see the man of the house. Believe this, God will not let the woman and the children go lacking. God will move you out the way. Eventually, God will move you out the way. But you know it's going to be some damage. It's going to be some damage done. Mm. So you as the man, we need to step back up to the plate and say, God, forgive me. And don't worry about what happened in the past. Let the past be the past. Because you can't change the past. You can let them know you was in my past but you're not in my future. You was in my past, but you're not in my future. Put Jesus Christ in your future. Put Jesus Christ in your everyday life and things will change. Don't let people beat you up with what you did in your past. Amen. This is what's holding a lot of men back Whoa. because they don't think that they worthy enough. Talk. Yes, man, you are worthy to repent, fall down on your knees, and cry out to the Father. Father, help me lead this home in the way that it needs to be led. And I'm telling you, he'll be right there. That's why I'm sitting here right now. And I'm telling you, it's, it's like she gets sweeter and sweeter. I can't tell you. She, 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 she cooks, she cleans, she love on me. She don't remind me of what I used to be. Amen. She tell me what I can be. She holds my arms up as I hold her arms up. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, it's a hundred hundred. Ain't no 50-50. Mm -mm. It's a hundred hundred in my home. And I truly thank God. She helping me. She builds me up. See, a good woman will build a man up. A good woman won't tear a man down. See, she's been building me up, building me up, building me up, building me up. Amen. To where I'm where I'm at today. That's the reason I'm still sitting here with my wife today. Because I accepted Jesus Christ and said, no longer can I live like a beggar bond. No longer can I live like a hooter. No longer. Well, I got to feel like I got to run to the crowd. I got to run to the pretty woman. I got to do no. He said, separate yourself from the things that so easily beset you. See, I got to separate myself from them things. I can't walk like I used to walk when I was a young kid, when I was a young soldier. I became a man. When I became a man, I put away those childish things. Let God come into your heart. And as we get ready to, you know, close out um, this series or, uh, you know, Morning Manor with um, our mm. love story, um, I just want to say to the young girl that may be watching, to the young woman that may be watching, to the old woman that may be watching. Yes. I just want to say to you that I have learned my value. I am still learning my worth. And I want to let you know that you are worthy to have the best. You, I'm not just talking about with things, purses, clothes, shoes, cars, homes. No, you're worthy to be loved. Mm. You are so worthy to be loved. And I say to you this morning, pick yourself up. You don't know yeah. how? You can connect with some women. There are women that are running after God. There are women, listen, I'm married, but I still have fun. Because I surround myself with women like-minded. You know, I'm a loner, so I have to be pulled out sometime. I'm private, so I have to really be pulled out sometime. But I do understand my worth. It doesn't matter if I'm in jeans and tennis shoes. I know my worth. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if I got a head scarf on my head. I know my worth. It doesn't matter if I don't have fingernails on. It doesn't matter if I don't have weave in my head. I know my worth. You say, well, Veronica, how do you know your worth? I felt my worth in my relationship with God. Yes. And I felt my worth 
and being privileged enough to center myself around older women and young women because sometimes the older women act like young women. They act like hoochie mamas, you know, but I'm asking God to restore that part of you that has been lost, to revive that part of you that has laid, that's laying dormant because God can do it. Our love story is none other than but a love story, but our love story is the foundation and the center of Christ. And our love story has a next episode. Mm -hmm. And so we're looking forward to the next episode. We're looking to 35 more years. And I can tell you it does get sweeter day by day. Mm -hmm. Because as we get older, sometimes our health fail. Sometimes we have health crisis. Mm -hmm. But I have been reminded in the last three years, those vows. Will he be with me through sickness? Will he be with me through health? Ooh, Will he be with me? And I can tell you I have a marvelous testimony. Anybody that know me, I don't look like what I've been through. But I can tell you, my husband, when the caretakers tried to come in, he said, no, I'm going to take care of my wife. When the children tried to bombard in, he said, no, I'm going to take care of your mama. And I'm telling you, my love for him, God showed me a different pocket of love. Mm. And our marriage grew stronger and stronger. And likewise with him, he's had some health issues. Mm -hmm. And I've had to do the same in return. Yes. But I want to let you know, it's all of those ingredients that makes a marriage worth having. And I can tell you right now, people say, I don't want to be married. Well, that's you. I want to be married. I, I love my husband. I love what he brings to the table. I love how he sets the temperature in my house. And I love him because he loves me for who I am. And he accepts my wrong. Not, not to tell me, he, not to tell me what the, he doesn't, you know, tell me uh, this, this, and this, you need to do this, and you should have done this, and you this, should have done that. No, all that babble. All that, all them words that don't mean nothing. He builds me up when I'm torn down. And I will tell you, he has been a blessing in my ministry. He has held me up for over 27 years. You know if you know me. If that's something to come to you and say, you know what? I'll push you forward. God ain't called me to pastor. God ain't called me to do this. God, even when man tried to label it on his head, mm -hmm. he stood firm. Even being called a weak man. Mm. He's still firm. Because you know what? He know his value and he know he set the temperature in his home. Mm. So I'm saying to you today, we thank you for tuning in. Yes. We thank you for helping us celebrate 35 years of marriage. Yes. yes and oh, we got some great things planned. Let me tell you something. You can enjoy Jesus in celebrating one another. We got an exciting day ahead of us. We are going away next week. To be away, uh, God has blessed us to get away, uh, to, to, to love on each other. And I'm excited on this evening. I don't care what you say. I don't care what nobody else say. Where I'm taking you, babe? Oh, man, she's going to take me to see Gladys Knight. Now, my husband said if she get on stage, well, he might not come back home, too. <laughs> I told her, I said, if old Gladys Knight let me get on that stage, I'm going to tell her, baby, I'm gone. I'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you something. I have learned yeah, how to yeah. love and how to have how to live life. Yeah. We're learning how to live life outside of the four walls of the church. Oh, yes. Because you exactly. can get lost in it. Oh, yes. And your marriage will die. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So, I, let me give you this nugget right here now. Okay. Let me give you this nugget right here. Let God lead you mm -hmm. on who you give your ear to for conversation about things that you're going through. Oh, God good. has somebody for you. And believe me, let God lead you. Sometimes, I'm going to just tell you this because we don't went through it. Mm -hmm. You can Ooh, go to Jesus. pastors. You can go to some pastors right now. Oh God. They might be listening to my voice. Yes, yes, yes. They will take what you say if you're going through something and try to utilize it to get to your spouse. Oh, we've been there. Oh, let me just try to tell you this now. Let me just try to tell you, because a man going to be a man, and a woman going to be a woman. Oh. But let me tell you, from a man's point of view, a man going to be a man. And sometimes you can be telling them personal things Jesus. that you're going through in your life, and that man that's called himself the pastor will utilize that information that you give him to get next to your spouse. Let me tell you something. Mm. You be prayerful about who you share your information with when you're going through something. 
You just don't go talk to anybody. Because let me tell you something. The saved and the unsaved is in the house of the Lord. That's what the church is for. And sometimes it starts from the pulpit to the back of the church. Because you in the house of God, you got to be praying and you got to let the Holy Ghost lead you in who you give your information to. I just say that again. Let the Holy Ghost lead you to whom you give your information to in the house of God. And God will do it. He'll do it every time. Amen. And the same as uh, my husband was saying concerning men, it's the same way with women. Yes. You know, women have, from the pulpit, have chased down my husband. Let's keep it 100. You know, knowing that we may have been going through something. And try to focus in on that vulnerable part. Because I will tell you that lust is in the house of God. It yes. is. Oh, yes. Lust, adultery, all that. For it's in the house of the Lord. But through the years, we've learned how to seek out wise counsel. Mm. Mm -hmm. And that's what we pray you will do on this morning. So we've kind of hit into every pocket yes. of what our marriage has been through that oh, has it yes. made us come forward and share a part of our love story. Yes. But oh, on yes. this morning, we want to close out in prayer. And we want to say to you, thank you for tuning in to Morning Manor. We pray that you have been highly blessed yes, in the Lord. Lord. This is Walter Clay Simpson and I'm Hazel Veronica Simpson. Mm, mm, and mm. we're coming to you this morning as a married couple, as one. Yes, We're oh, not yes. two, we're one. And we pray for you on this morning. We just want to close out in a short prayer. I want to say this prayer. Um, yes. it, it, it is that um, marriage is all about commitment, uh, sacrifice, serving, giving, forgiving, and then doing it all over again. Yes. Every day. I want to say that one more time. Marriage is about commitment, sacrifice, serving, giving, forgiving, mm. forgiving, and then doing it all over again yes. every day. Oh, you know, regardless of the changes in personalities, the yes. aging bodies, or the ever warning yes. ebb and flow of romantic love, the same goes for the prayer for your marriage. And the more we understand what God wants for our marriage, mm -hmm. the easier it is to yield to his will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what, what is God's will for marriage? What is God's will for marriage? God's will for marriage is to let him have sound control. Because when you really look at how it's set up in the Bible, the marriage is a re replica of the bride, of the church. And so we have to understand that, that God wants our marriage to last. So Father God, in the name of Jesus on this morning, mm -hmm. we pray this morning that the words that have flowed out of our lips, Lord, yes. what you have put in our hearts to uh, put forth to uh, those that are watching, those that are tuning in, yes. those that will catch this video uh, Ooh, later on. Hallelujah. We pray today, Father God, that there would, they would find some restitution in that. Yes, they Lord. would find some healing in that. They would find some reviving in that. They would find some instruction in that. They would find some counsel in that. Yes. And God, that, that we have said today, Father God, we thank you that it's covered in the blood. We thank you that the blood of Jesus is against you, Satan. And we thank you that for every temptation that you bring forth our way, you provide a way of escape. So we thank you on today for bringing us together. How marvelous it is for the for people in the household of faith and those that are saved and unsaved to see a marriage after God's own heart. And so we thank you on this morning that, yes, we're looking forward to the next episode. We're looking forward to the next chapter of this love that God has put us to, that has put up, that he is that he is making and that he's working on and that he's growing in the yes. inside of us. Yes. And so today, Father God, we ask you, oh God, we lift up those individuals that are struggling. Those individuals that may be on the mountaintop right now. We lift up those, God, that are struggling with themselves. Yes. 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 Single, mm. married, divorced, going through a divorce, on the verge of walking out of their off from their family. We lift those individuals up right now and we come against the spirit of interference in the name of Jesus. And we ask you, Father God, to be that all that they need you to be on today. 
In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. In Jesus' name, forgive us, God, for our sins. Yes, forgive Lord. us for our transgressions. Forgive those, God, who have, have, have spoken words over our marriage to kill yes. it. God, we pray for our enemies today. And we say, have mercy on them, oh God. Yes. Help us to love them, God. Help us to forgive them, oh God. Yes, Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We truly thank God for every one of you that's under the sound of our voices. We thank God for the healing. We thank God for the deliverance. We thank God, amen, for the love that he is restoring in your heart. We thank God for the love that he is restoring in your family. We truly thank God. Amen. We pray for the United States of America. We pray for our president. We pray for our Republican. We pray for Democrat. We just truly thank God. Amen. For this time that we have spent sharing, amen, the love story about this marriage. Amen. It's nobody but God. Amen. It's nobody but God that can give you love. Amen. Can't nobody else give you love like God. And I truly thank God for the time that we have spent together. Now tell him how much you love me, baby. Tell him how much you love me. Tell him how much you love me. I can't say how much, but I can tell you that till Jesus come home, I'm going to be trying to love you as much as I can. Amen. Mm -hmm. Where the love will not, I'm going to throw gasoline on the fire. Woo! I'm going to just burn us up. Woo! Amen. Amen. The I Simpson. can't thank God for the Simpson. Amen. Because, amen, God joined us together. Amen. And I thank God for it. Amen. So, God, keep the fire burning. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah, glory, 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 glory. You've been listening to Living Your Best Life with the in-depth life application principles and teachings with Dr. Veronica Simpson. We pray that you've been blessed by this timely word of encouragement and insightful teachings as you prepare to step into this new season and live your best life. Visit Dr. Veronica Simpson at drvsimpson.com. That's drvsimpson.com. On Facebook at Veronica H. Simpson. Instagram at Hazel Simpson 316. On YouTube, Pastor Veronica Simpson. Speaker, advocate, author, and educator sought after empowerment, veteran, revisionist thinker, and a transformative leader that possesses a mantle to meet the needs of everyone. Dr. VS would love to host your next event, workshop, or conference. Contact her at Veronica Simpson 59 at yahoo.com. That's Veronica Simpson 59 at yahoo.com for more details.